Alright guys, so I'm in the middle of the intercooler install. Um, I was going to do an install video, but there's like 10 of them online. So I figured what I'd do instead is just show you guys what this intercooler looks like installed before the bumper goes on. And just give a couple tips that I came across while doing the installation. That I haven't seen on any of the videos online so far. So uh, the first thing is obviously this is the Speed Factory Racing Intercooler. As far as the, the fit goes it went on perfect. I had no problems. It fits perfect. Um, as you can see compared to the factory intercooler it's a lot bigger. Before I stuck it on I put on top of this and the speed factory intercooler is identical width to the factory one and is about two times as tall so basically if you took two of the factory intercoolers as far as the core goes if you took two of the factory intercoolers and stacked them on top of each other that is going to be about the exact size of the speed factory racing front mount intercooler um again it went on perfect had no problems with it a few tips a couple issues or whatever you want to call it that i ran into one when i was taking the bolts off right here for the bumper support one of the bolts completely broke on me and i called the ford dealership to see if they had the parts in stock and they didn't and I ended up talking to the guy for a bit, you know, just to see why one of those bolts would break on such a new car. And basically, those bolts have a, a, a pinch, I think he called it a pinch lock. It's a pinch lock bolt or nut. And uh, basically, he said what normally people do is they heat them up, I guess, to before they loosen them. So, uh, I obviously didn't do that when I got to the last one. All of them were actually pretty hard. But when I got to the last one, I just felt something wasn't right. And sure enough, the bolt snapped. Luckily, I got the remainder of the bolt out of the support where it goes into right there. So, that's one thing. If you are doing one of these bigger intercoolers. And you're taking off the, the front bumper support to be careful with those nuts. I was thinking maybe if I would have went from the back, if that was all possible. I didn't really look to see if it was. But maybe if I would have took the nut off rather than loosening the, the bolt itself at first, that might have helped. But either way, watch out for that. Another thing that I uh, found that was made things easier is... When you're dealing with this seven millimeter, this hidden seven millimeter bolt right there before you take the bumper off, I know all the install videos they tell you to take off these three push pins. But if you take off that fourth one that you'll find up here, it makes it a lot easier and you don't have to mangle this like the install video show and, and pull it back and manhandle it. It kind of allows you to get in there easier without. Again, just mangling your plastic, you know, fender liner. Um, uh, let's see. One more thing is I know a couple of these install videos for these bigger intercoolers, they recommend getting a Dremel tool and trimming these plastics right here that normally go on the side of the radiator and intercooler. But uh, if you take a look at it, they come off pretty easy. They actually come off with, uh, where is it? There it is. They actually come off with just a, a plastic push pin on each side. That goes right, where is it? That goes right there. So if you want to take these plastics off instead of trimming them, all you got to do basically is just pull on them. They'll come right off. One reason why I took them off also is because if you look at the plastic up there, it just kind of blocks the airflow in my opinion. And I tried looking online 
and uh, couldn't really find too much about it. And what I did find is basically they do that for the active grill shutters. And this is the active grill shutters right here, which if you're gonna do one of these bigger intercooler installs, you have to remove that. It doesn't matter what type of intercooler you do. If you do one of these, you know, true front mount intercoolers, the bigger ones, you're gonna have to take the, the grill shutters off permanently. <clears throat> and so yeah, basically uh, I took the plastics off, kind of figured it'd give it better airflow. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. The install is fairly easy. Just got the, uh, the pipes and everything put back on. So now I'm about to just put the support on and, uh, put the, per the lethal performance lower grill delete on and throw everything back together and put the bumper on. If you guys want to see what... This is what the uh, the lethal performance lower grill delete is. Honestly, all it is is the factory GT grill, and you can see where they took a Dremel and they just cut out the honeycomb part. But I mean, it's only a hundred dollars, so it's definitely, in my opinion, easier than buying the gt lower grill and then cutting it out or if you're going to do the top i think the top is like 200 dollars. if you already have the gt grills it definitely looks like it'd be pretty easy to just take a dremel and cut it out rather than pay the 300 dollars for both the grills anyways so that's it that's what the intercooler looks like one more time compared to the factory and once I get everything back together, I will do a review video on the intercooler itself. That's it for this one.